Well, good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's good to see each and every one of you again today. We are truly blessed and truly thankful to have another glorious and wonderful day of life. Thinking about the blessings of God, the love of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God that we feel and experience each and every glorious day. Today, I'm truly thankful and grateful that God has allowed me to be a part of ministry for many years now. You know, I think about the beginning journey, how that in the beginning, you know, I struggled quite a bit in the ministry journey because, you know, in the beginning, and I'm sure this is true for a, a, a lot of people, but Brother Stewart, in the beginning of the ministry journey, there was that sense of even though I knew that God was able to do things, even though I knew that God had uh, saved me and had called me to do the work of the ministry, that there was that lack of faith or that lack of confidence, not in not in, in God, but in, I guess, in what he is able to do with me. Because So I, I think sometimes we put ourselves in the equation uh, of God's work or of God's plan to the point where that we almost feel like we're the ones who make it happen as if, you know, if, if, if we're not good enough, if we don't do it appropriately enough, that God's plan is not going to be fulfilled or God's plan is not going to happen. But my friend, <clears throat> I want to tell you something tonight. God's plan is set. It, it's determined. It, it's already planned. It's already been spoken by God. And, and so tonight, my friend, it, the success of God's plan it has nothing to do with our ability, but what we have to understand is that us us receiving God's plan or accepting God's plan or following God's plan means that we get to enjoy the blessing, Sister Tammy, as God brings about the success or the fulfillment of his plan. You know, I think about that tonight. And when you really realize that tonight, then when the enemy tries to make you look at the, the shape of the church or the shape of the world or the shape of things going on in your personal life, he's not able to steal away from you the faith or the confidence that God is able to do all things and that God will do all things. See, I think tonight, Brother Workman, that sometimes we forget about that, don't we? See, from the very beginning, and I want you to think about this, the plan of Jesus coming and dying on the cross of Calvary was established before the foundation of the world. So I want you to think about if God had already planned before the foundation of the world for his son to come and die on the cross for your and I sins, imagine, you know, we, we think about that God not only sees the beginning but the end. And so you say, well, preacher, do you think God knows what's going to happen even beyond that? Oh, of course he does. We can go into the book of Revelation and many other books. A lot of people just go to the book of Revelation, but there's several other books, the book of Daniel and different ones that speak about prophecies and speak speak about the end of times, but it's a little bit harder sometimes for people to understand those things. But we can look at scripture and see that God already knows the plan that he has for mankind even to the very end. And, and, and so when you think about that, if God already knew it, God had already spoken it, God has already planned it, then my friend, it coming to pass has nothing to do with you and I, my friend. It all has to do with the fact that God himself, the creator of the universe, spoke all of this into existence, put all of this into place, put all of this plan and all this purpose into motion. And, and see, so that's the reason why that we can say for sure and for certainty that there is an appointed time for all things. Because why? Because God has already appointed the time for all things, all things past, all things present, and all things future. God has already spoken when those moments are going to happen. Now, my friend, what you and I have to do is that we have to be fully confident or have full confidence in God's plan 
and trust it and believe it and, and, and allow it to come alive in our lives in a way where we become stronger, where we grow in him. My friend tonight, if you have been living any time, especially if you've been living for God any time at all, Sister Crystal, there should not be a shadow of a doubt in your heart and your mind that number one, that God is real, that God exists. There should not be any doubt in any of our minds tonight that God the Creator exists. Why? Because I guarantee you, if you're just like me, God has proven himself, shown himself time and time again. My friend, when you look at the creation, there's no way, and I know that there's theories out there uh, about the Big Bang, and there's theories about evolution, and there's theories about the submergible pool, and all these other things out there. My my friend, I want you to understand, there's no way that all of this that we see and we know and we've experienced happened by an accident or a coincidence. There's not a doubt in my mind that there is an author a creator, a designer, one who brought all of this into existence. And I believe that he's got the God of creation. And the cool thing about God is, you know, if you read the word of God, honestly, God does not spend his time trying to convince you that he's real. God just knows that it, that if you see and you understand and you look at the power and the majesty and all the things that are happening, God knows that you're going to recognize that there is something. And I believe that every human on this earth, whether they're a sinner or a saint, whether they're atheist or Christian, I believe that every human believes in something tonight, my friend. And so I want you to think about this tonight. So there's no doubt. So let, let's get that first off the table. To have true faith, to have true confidence, to have complete faith, complete confidence, you and I, Brother Ronnie, know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there is a creator. And my friend, I think that's the beginning piece of that. Now, where the debate comes is, is who is that creator? What is that creator? Well, my friend, tonight I'm going to tell you something. There's a creator that loves you and I enough that has proven his love. See, here's the next thing that talks about the, the true creator is the love that we have experienced throughout the generations of time by God who created us. The word of God says in the book of Genesis, he loves us that way. Why? Because in the very beginning, God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. Let us make him male and female female. So let me tell you something tonight, my friend. God loved you and I more than any creation that he created in so much that he made us in his very own image and likeness. Now I'm going to tell you something. If you are any kind of artist, if you're any kind of creator, if you're any kind of carpenter or builder or engineer, you'll understand what I'm saying tonight. Whenever somebody build something or create something that reflects them or, or resembles them in some way, whether it's their personality, whether if it's their mindset, whatever it is that reflects them, and they take pride in that, my friend, I'm going to tell you, that's someone you can say has put love into that creation. Somebody really cares. You know, God took the time, my friend, when he created you and I to give us feelings, to give us emotions, to give us free will, to give us a plan to give us benefits. My friend, there's so many things that point to the love of God and how that God did not just stick us here on the planet earth and say, figure it out, my friend. But God not only brought us here, but God gave us a plan that we might use to journey through this world as we're living in it. My friend, the 66 books of the Bible, you and I are so blessed in this day and hour to have. But how many knows that in the very beginning, they did not have the 66 books of the Bible like you and I. Adam and Eve did not have the 66 books of the Bible to sit down and read like you and I. But here's the thing that's cool about the very beginning. The Word of God says that before Adam and Eve had sinned in the garden, you know the Word of God said that God came down in the cool of the day and walked with them in the midst of the garden. They got to experience God and while they were here and God spoke to them and walked with them and had relationship with them. Well, we know that when man sinned in the garden, that that relationship between man and God had been severed. You know, that's what God meant 
when he told Adam and Eve that the very hour, the very moment that you eat of that tree, that tree of good and evil, that tree of for that knowledge, my friend, I'm going to tell you something tonight. With they ate of that tree, that that eternal separation that that began on that moment in that day, that a separation that happened, my friend, that was severed because of the death that came into mankind. It, now that we do know that after that fall, that God did pronounce a physical death upon man as well, and, and we know that that God also put up that flaming sword. Or or he blocked the way to the entrance back into the Garden of Eden so Adam and Eve could not eat of that tree uh, of eternal life, that tree that would make them live forever and ever in their present state of sin or their condition. And, and so God, who say, God loved us enough that, that he also knew that in the midst of our mistakes, in the midst of our bad choices, God also was looking out for us and was making a plan to protect us, to guide us, to strengthen us, and to reconcile us. Now, my friend, I believe every bit of that from beginning to end. Don't you tonight? I believe that Adam and Eve is the beginning of all living. I believe the word of God calls her the mother of all living. I'm going to tell you something tonight. We all, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're African American. I don't care if you're Caucasian. I don't care if you're Indian or red. I don't care what color you are, what race you are, what nationality you are, where you come from. We all come from the very same beginning, my my friend, and that was number one. That was God creating mankind in the Garden of Eden, and we all go back. All of us trace all of it back to that very point. So for any of us, now here's the thing that we have to understand: that God is not partial to anyone, but God, God treats us all equally and loves us equally. So my friend, tonight. I don't know why people put so much more confidence in this individual or that individual or whatever. I want you to know tonight, all of my confidence is in God and God's plan for mankind. Now, I know that sometimes it's hard to not to understand while sin is in the world and while evil's in the world, why these things are happening and what's going on tonight, my friend. I know that's hard for many of you to understand that tonight, but I'm going to tell you something. Even in the midst of all of this world, even in the midst of all this pain and suffering, I am still convinced, I still have faith that God loves you and I. I still believe that God loves his creation. I still believe that he loves his creation above all all the other beasts of the of the world, above all the other beasts that he's created. I believe that he loves you and I tonight, and I believe that love is un conditional. Now, we sometimes call that agape love, you know, that unconditional love, that unending love. My friend, tonight, I'm going to tell you something. You don't earn God's love. You don't deserve God's love, but you receive God's love because God loves all of mankind. So whether you're a Christian or you're lost, God loves you tonight, my friend. Now, you say, well, if God loves me, then why is it that I'm going to die and go to hell? Well, here's where it comes down to the challenging piece. God loved you enough to give you a choice, to give you a plan, to give you the way to escape hell fire tonight, my friend. But here's the thing. God also loved you and I enough tonight that he gave us free will. We have to make that choice. If you choose to love God back and to accept that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, that he came and he died and he rose again and you accept his sacrifice or the blood of his sacrifice and allow it to be applied to your sins, my friend, tonight, you can be saved and you can make heaven your home no matter who you are. You might say, well, preacher, you don't know what I've done. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know where I've been at. You don't know how mean I've been to people. You don't know what I've said to God or done against God. Here's another confidence that I have tonight. I am confident and I have faith that God's word says that God, that it's not his will that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. I fully believe, you say, well, preacher, do you think that that man down the road that has been mean and evil and cruel, his heart's been hardened, he's been doing this and he's been doing that, do you think that God loves him and can save him? My friend, I absolutely do. I believe that no matter who you are tonight, that the 
the potential for salvation is there for you tonight, my friend. And, and the Word of God tells me that God stands at the door and He's knocking tonight. He's knocking at your heart's door no matter who you are. You say, well, preacher... You don't understand how many times that I've tried to serve God and I just couldn't make it. I backslid. I walked away. I came up short. Whatever you say tonight, my friend, I'm going to tell you something. If you are still here tonight, I want you to hear me tonight, my friend. If you are still here tonight, if you are still breathing, if you still have your right mind to acknowledge that you have sinned and come short, if you have the right mind to acknowledge that there's still a God of creation, that Jesus is the Savior of all, my my friend, I'm going to tell you something tonight. You can still be saved. See, I believe that until a man loses his last breath and he leaves this world, he has an opportunity to be saved. How do we know that? Well, I'm going to tell you something tonight, my friend. There's a man, if you remember, when Jesus was hung on the cross at Calvary, he was hung between two thieves, and one on one side was mocking the Savior of the world, while the other on the other side, he said, I believe this man. Don't be attacking this man kind of thing. I'm not going to go into all the details. I'm not saying it word for word. Yes, I, I am to ad living what was said on the cross. So if anybody out there is trying to take it literal, be very careful. I'm trying to give you an example. But here's the thing that this man, as he began to speak about the Savior of the world, a man whom the world had condemned to death, a man whom the world, Sister Brenda, thought, sought no value in anymore, rather for him to die and leave this world. Jesus, speak to this man. And, and when the man says remember me when you enter into your paradise Jesus said this day thou shalt be with me in paradise my friend on the cross of Calvary a sinner one who the world saw as nothing one whom the world had thrown away as trash one whom the world had stopped loving found a savior my friend on his very last day in this world that allowed him to find forgiveness and he was allowed to enter in to the the kingdom of God. My friend, tonight we need to stop giving up on people and we need to keep praying for people. We need to keep witnessing for people. We need to keep believing that God is able because my friend, tonight when you are fully convinced in the grace of God's mercy, when you are fully convinced in God's saving grace and God's loving grace, my friend, tonight you will be fully convinced that God can still save your child, that God can still save your family, that God can still save your loved one, God can still save your neighbor, God can still save your co-worker. My friend tonight, you will begin to believe again. I think what's wrong with the world, what's wrong with Christianity, Brother Jeff, is that Christianity has lost its confidence, it's lost its faith that God is still able to heal and deliver and forgive and set free those that are bound down by the chains of sin. See, tonight I want us to look at Ephesians chapter 2. And I guarantee you, every one of you have read this, Brother Rocky. I guarantee every one of you have studied this and read it and you've heard it preached and you've heard it teach. But I want you to understand how magnificent this is for you and I tonight. And we need to believe it with all of our heart, Brother Workman. It says, in verse 1, it says, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses in Sins. I'm going to tell you something tonight, my friend. If it was not for the salvational gift of Jesus Christ, if it was not for the Holy Spirit coming into your darkness, into your place of sin, if it wasn't for a loving God who looked down and saw you in the trenches of sin and sorrow and called you out and saved you and set you free, my friend, tonight you would be just like anyone else in the world. You would be out there committing all manner of sin, thinking that you're doing 
doing the right thing, thinking that you're living the life, thinking that this is what it should be. But praise God tonight, my friend, if your name has been written out and God has found you in the depths of your sin and your darkness, and if he reached be way below the bottom and saved you and brought you out, you, my friend, should rejoice tonight. You should be shouting and praising and glorifying God that God saw you in your mess, that God loved you and delivered you from your mess, and now tonight your heart and your mind and your eyes are open unto the truth of Jesus Christ, because here the Word of God says that we were dead in our trespasses and sins. That's what he meant when Jesus told Nicodemus that you must be born Again, it means to become to come alive in the truth, in the relationship, in the acknowledgement, and the understanding of God's plan for you, my friend. He says, In which you once walked according to the course of this world. You say, Preacher, I ain't never done anything wrong in my whole entire life. I've been saved ever since I came out of my mama's womb, and I've been saved ever since. I want you to know, here's the thing that I understand, that we were all born into the sin nature. I want you to hear me tonight, my friend, no matter who you are. We were all born into the sin nature of man. And therefore, before God, that all of our sins was as filthy rags. Every one of us, no matter who you are, you say, Preacher, I'm a good person. I don't go out. I don't party. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't cuss. I don't cheat. I don't steal. I don't commit adultery. I don't commit adultery. I'm living a life that is good and pure and holy. My friend, I'm going to tell you something. No matter how good of life that you have been living, no matter how good of a person you are, you still have to come down and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, repent of your sins and have his blood cover your sins tonight, my friend. You might say, well, preacher, I don't have any sins. I'm going to tell you, we were born into the sin nature, so therefore we all must be born again. Huh? Huh? It's not by goodness, nor by works tonight. And I'm going to get into that, my friend. He says, according to the prince and the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. See, at one time, and this is, I, I make people mad at me over this statement. At one time, I'm, I'm just going to get you to understand tonight. At one time, you was a child of disobedience. At one time, you would have been, have been considered a follower of Satan, even though I know you probably didn't go to a satanic church. No, you probably didn't do satanic rituals. No, you probably didn't wear a mask and all these other things. But my friend, because you were dead in your trespasses and sins, you were following the, the father of sin, the father of this world, who was leading you further and further away from God. Aren't you glad that somewhere along the road that you was delivered and set free from that spiritual hold that bound you and held you down? He says, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh. Now, here's the thing. Here's where the word of God does not exclude anyone. He said, for we all at one time conducted ourselves after what? After the lust of our flesh, after the desires of our flesh. I had a woman one time, and I'm not going to mention her name, but I had a woman one time who told me, said, preacher, I cannot identify with any of these sinners because I've never lived that kind of life. So basically what she was trying to tell me is is that she didn't never that she never had sin in her life. But what she don't understand is, is that I watched her gossip. I watched her backbite. I watched her spiritually murder. I watched her do all kinds of sinful things not recognizing that it was sin. See Here's the thing that we have to understand tonight. I think that if we are not careful, we don't recognize what sin is and how sin gets into our lives and how that it works. 
Because, Brother Philip, I'm going to tell you something tonight. Sometimes what when we mention sin, Sister Tammy, what a lot of people are saying, when we mention sin, oh, they're thinking about the big rocks of sin, as we call it. They're thinking about, well, preacher, I don't go out here and physically murder anybody. No, but I wonder how many people get spiritually murdered by some of the statements that people say and some of the things that people do. No, preacher, I don't go out here and worship idols, but I'm going to tell you something. They'll pay hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to sit at the feet of some famous singer or famous movie star or somebody famous. I'm going to tell you something tonight, my friend. We better be very careful. When we are taking and spending hundreds and thousands of dollars to go out and stand at the feet of somebody because they're popular, my friend, I want you to be very careful. You may be dangerous on just a little bit of an edge of worshiping that person. I'm going to tell you something tonight, my friend. There's only one individual, not Pastor Perry, not any other preacher, not any other pastor. There's only one who deserves your worship tonight, and that's Jesus Christ who died on the cross of Calvary for your sins, my friend. You said, now, preacher... You're definitely diving in deep. Oh, my friend, I'm going to tell you something. I think that sin sneaks in in people's lives in ways where, where they don't recognize it because, again, they're looking at the big things. They're saying, well, preacher, I don't go out here and commit adultery or adultery. I don't go out here and physically murder. I'm not stealing from nobody. I'm not getting drunk on Saturday night. No, but my friend, I'm going to tell you something. If we would really look at the lifestyle of the American person, if we would just look at the lifestyle of the American person, I'm going to tell you something. We would find, if we would allow God to truly, Brother Frank, open our eyes to the truth, if we would really allow God to open our eyes to the word of truth, we would acknowledge that... <clears throat> Many times that we're coming up short because let me tell you something. I, I'm just going to put it out there. I'm going to put it plain, my friends, tonight. The Word of God tells me that God is a jealous God and He'll share His glory with no one else. If we are giving someone else the credit or the praise for anything good in our life, for anything that we have tonight, whether it's ourselves, whether it's someone else, my friend, and we're not giving the praise and the credit back to God, then we are robbing God and we are trying to share his glory with others whom God said that he will not allow and he will not put up with tonight, my friend. I'm going to tell you something. The word of God says all good and perfect gifts come from where? They come from above, Sister Tammy. And if we give credit to ourselves because I have all this, how many times have you heard people say, well, look at all that I have. It's all because of me. I'm going to tell you something now. If God did not give you the ability, if God did not give you the strength, if God did not allow you, you would not be able to maintain or have any of that tonight, my friend. It is God who wakes you up out of the bed every morning. It's God who gives you the strength and the ability to do the things that you're doing. And all credit should go back to him. Woo! Now I'm going to meddle just a little bit more. Now, I, I think about the time that we rob from God. How much time do we really give God in our worship and our walk? You say, oh, preacher, I give him an hour every Sunday or two hours every Sunday. That's my time to God. I'm going to tell you something, my friend. There's a scripture that talks about not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, and that we are to do it more as we see the day approaches. You know what I've seen, Brother Philip? I see churches having less and less service and more worldly things because they here's what they want to do. They said, well, preacher, we want to have family time. I'm going to tell you something, my friend. The Word of God says to train your child up in the way that you would have it to go and it would they would not depart from it. My friend, I'm going to tell you something now. Whenever you dedicated your child to God, the thing that you dedicated to say, you said, God, I'm dedicating this child back to you because I recognize that you gave this child to me and, and I'm going to make sure that I raise this child in a godly way to know your word, to know your truth, to follow your plan. My friend, tonight I'm going to tell you something. If you are failing to take that child to Sunday school and church and to teach it the ways of God, my friend, then you are not completing or keeping your promise to 
to God when you committed that child to God. My friend, and I'm going to tell you something. The Word of God says it's better not to make a vow than to make a vow and break it <clears throat> because it's considered sin. Then we get into disobedience, my friend. The Word of God tells us that disobedience is the wages of sin. If you are going against what God is telling you to do tonight, my friend, that is called disobedience. Disobedience is sin. So many ways in which we are putting self above God. Wow. So, for anyone who says that we never put our desires of our flesh before God, my friend, many people might be coming up short tonight. Huh? That's right, Brother Ronnie. He says we can't even have a one-night revival. Do you know the last revival that I tried to have, you know, that they didn't want to have a five-night revival, only a three-night revival. Five nights is too much, uh, Pastor. I'm going to tell you something tonight, my friend. I can remember, Sister Crystal, a few years ago, it's been a little while back, but I can remember a few years ago that we had an old brush arbor service. And I don't know if any of you guys know what that is. I'm an old hillbilly from the hills of West Virginia. But what we do is we had a brush arbor service. And, and basically what they did is they went out and cut off tree branches and things and they made a shelter and, and do you know for 30 nights there was service under that brush harbor. It rained it stormed, it done all kinds of things but we still had service. I'm going to tell you something. If I was to bring something up like that today and ask somebody to do that, boy they'd look at me like there was something wrong. What do you mean preacher? We're going to go 30 nights straight nights to the house of God. We're going to have service for 30 straight services. I'm going to tell you something today my friend. We better be very careful in our slackness with God and our worship with God and, and not say that, well, preacher, I think we're perfect just like we are. I'm going to tell you, we all need to come up and begin to grow just a little bit more. The church needs to get back to the old ways of God. The Word of God said, seek ye the old past and walk therein. We need to get back to the foundational truths. We need to get back to the place where we believe sin is sin, right is right, wrong is wrong, God is God and hell is hell and we need to preach it and teach it my friend we need to make sure that our people know we need to warn them we need to prepare them we need to empower them and we need to see them grow in the goodness and the truth of God and that we help them to understand that we need to crucify the flesh and bring it into subjection to God's plan I didn't know I was going to preach on all this tonight but here I am he says Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as others. He said, but God, who is rich in mercy. Here's the good thing tonight, my friend. Yes, I poked at you a little bit. Yes, I poked at sin a little bit. But here's what I want you to think about the love and the goodness of God. He says, but God who is rich and mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. Huh? Even when the world was filled with sin. The word of God says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Maybe, maybe tonight during some of that, maybe, maybe I poked on your life a little bit. Maybe it hit you just a little bit tonight, my friend. Do you know what? The word of God says that God chastens or corrects or convicts those whom he loves. Huh? If that, if, if what I said a little bit earlier, if it kind of got under your skin a little bit, or if it kind of poked at your heart a little bit, if it kind of poked at your mind a little bit tonight, my friend, understand it's not Pastor Perry being mean, but it's God loving you enough tonight to tell you the truth. 
It's God trying to reach into your places of the areas of your life where you're coming up short so that you can become stronger, so that you can become that individual that he has designed and created you to be. He loves you that much. He says, And he raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Verse 8 is the one that we all know. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. Faith. I've used that word a little bit tonight, a little bit earlier especially, about being completely, completely confident or completely given to faith in God. My friend, I'm going to tell you something tonight. You should not have a doubt in your heart and mind what faith really is. According to the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews says in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, it says, what? It says, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of the things not seen, my friend. I'm going to tell you something tonight. I like what one writer said. It, it, when he broke this down, he translated that it, into a way uh, that you and I might understand it tonight. Why mouth translated that very scripture in, into a wording and understanding that you can I understand? I want to read that for you tonight. It says, when he wrote this, he, he said, Faith is a confident assurance of that which we hope. A confident assurance in that which we hope hope. What are you hoping for tonight, my friend? My hope is in Jesus. My hope is in the plan that God has. My hope is in God's love and God's mercy and God's grace. All of that wraps up in him. So my true confidence gives me assurance in whom God is and what God does and what God does for me tonight, my friend. He goes on, he says, it is a conviction of the reality of things which we do not see. Faith means that we will not give up no matter what we face. Faith means that we completely surrender to God and we are committed to him no matter what. He says that we are saved for by grace have you been saved through faith. Tonight, my friend, that faith is in Jesus Christ. Pastor Perry cannot save you. I've not saved a human. I know there's a lot of preachers who brag about all the people they got saved. I got news for you tonight. I've not saved one person. Do you know why? Because Jesus is the one who does the saving. What I do is I'm, I'm a vessel who's willing for God to use that vessel. And God to work through this vessel. But I'm going to tell you something tonight, my friend. If you've been touched in any way, if the word of truth has touched your heart in any way tonight, and you feel a little bit of joy, you feel a little bit of excitement, whatever you're feeling tonight, I'm going to tell you, you better give that praise to God. It don't belong to Pastor Perry. Huh? He says, and that it's not of what? Not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. My friend, you didn't save yourself tonight. God saved you. God saved you. And my friend tonight, the word of God says the work that God began, he's going to continue to do until that day. See, here's where I have strong faith and confidence tonight, Sister Cindy. When I look at the road ahead and I look at the things that are going on in the world, if I look at Pastor Perry, Brother Al, I would have to say, nope, I can't do it. Nope, I can't make it. Why? Because if I try to do it in my own strength and in my own power, I cannot. But here's what I want you to understand. I recognize that it's not of myself. I recognize that tonight, my friend. I recognize that it's all God. And here's the faith and the confidence that I have, my friend. While I look at it and I say it's impossible, 
if you remember, there was a discussion uh, uh, about who could enter into the kingdom of heaven and all that between the disciples and Jesus. And Jesus said to them, with man, this is impossible. Huh? And that's true. But I love the fact that he comes and says, but with God, all things are possible. Tonight, I believe somebody needs to hear that. Because I think that there's been people, Brother Frank, that's been struggling in their walk with God. I think there's people that has been struggling and stepping out in their ministry with God. I think there's people who's been struggling in many, many different ways that I do. My friend, I want you to hear this. It is not of yourself, but it is through and by the power of God. He said, it's not by might nor by power, but it's by thy spirit, saith the Lord. I want you to know tonight, my friend. God can do it. Not only can he, he will do it. But what you have to do tonight, my friend, is you have to be fully confident, fully committed, and you have to fully believe in faith in God and God's plan for you. Do you believe that God loves you tonight? You should. Do you believe that God is able tonight? You should. Do you believe that God wants you to be saved and wants you to have victory? You should. Why? Because he does. And my friend, I'm going to tell you something. If that's what God wants, and if that's what God has already spoken from the very beginning, then my friend tonight, what you have to do is you just have to accept it and let it take place in your life. You have to give in to God, give your free will over to him and say, Lord, here I am. I give all of me to you. Maybe tonight, maybe you're just like the man who had the son that came to, when he came to Jesus and, and Jesus asked him, said, do you believe that your son can be healed? The man says, yes, Lord, I believe. But he also went on to say, Tammy, he said, but Lord, help me with my unbelief. I believe that every one of you listening tonight believe the word of God. I believe you do. I believe you believe in Jesus Christ. I believe you believe that there's a God of creation who created this world. I believe that you believe tonight that there is a salvational plan for mankind. But where it comes up short tonight, my friend, is where, where and how all of that applies to yourself. I believe that's the challenge that people are having tonight. Do you know I've met sinners who believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world? I have. Who, who will tell me, preacher, I know that I, know to, I need to go to church. I know I need to get saved. I know that God loves me. But for whatever reason, Brother Philip, the enemy is being able to blind them and convince them that yes, while God loves them and God loves that church and God loves those people, for some reason, they cannot fully understand how that God loves them and how that his grace is sufficient for their life, how that God's plan is sufficient for their life, how that God wants to do this stuff for them. That's where it's coming up short. Oh, my friend, I love this next scripture, he says. Not of works, least any man should boast. I've been pastoring and preaching for a long, long time, but I'm going to tell you something, my friend. I am no more saved than you are. Why? Because we are all justified the same through the blood of Jesus Christ. Huh? Huh? I'm, I'm, I'm just as equal as you are in the eyes of God, my friend. It doesn't matter how many messages I preach. It doesn't matter, my friend, how many messages I teach. It doesn't matter how many times I've witnessed, how many times I've seen people come to the Lord, how many people I've baptized, how many times I've showed up at the church. I'm going to tell you something. What matters is 
Am I where I need to be in God? Is the blood truly applied to my sin? Am I forgiven? Am I ready to make heaven my home? And I'm going to tell you something tonight. I believe tonight that I truly am. Why? Because I believe that, Brother Ronnie, the Word of God says that God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins tonight. I, I fully believe, Brother Frank, with all of my heart, Brother Jeff, when I gave my life to Jesus, when I asked him, I said, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Come into my life and be my Savior. I believe with all of my heart, Sister Brenda, that God forgave me of my sins, and I believe they're under the blood of Jesus. They're no longer being remembered against me. I'm going to tell you, yes, I know tonight, Brother Rocky, there's things in my past that man will bring up. There are people in my past, there's people who back home in Man, West Virginia, who knew me and the things that I've done before, and Brother Philip, do they hold those things against me? Absolutely they do. My friend, even though it's under the blood of the Lamb, it still gets brought up against me, my friend, but I am thankful tonight that I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God says that I do not need to fear man, but I need to fear God. I'm going to tell you something. Those people who still hold things in my past against me do not determine my destination in the kingdom of heaven. I hope and pray that they're there on the day when they see this old boy enter into glory land, even though I know it don't work that way. Wouldn't it be nice that they would actually see me walking through the gates of pearls? Why? Because I'm going to tell you, their opinion about me, their decisions about me, their judgments about me, their words about me, Sister Heather, does not determine if I'm going to heaven tonight. What determines if I'm going to heaven tonight, my friend, is if my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and my sins are covered by the blood of the Lamb. I'm going to tell you tonight, I'm going to the kingdom of heaven, not by man's power, not by man's choice, not by man's permission, but through and by the power of God tonight, my friend. And that's what you've got to understand tonight. Man is not determining where you are going to go. Woo! Ain't that good? Huh? Ain't that good tonight? That's right, Brother Danny. They don't define who I am. God defines who I am tonight. Huh? He says this, my friend. He said, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. There's a scripture that says, that we are beautifully and wonderfully made. My friend, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I know that. But do you know what? I know this. I'm a child of the King. Maybe tonight, maybe tonight, maybe you don't fit in with people's opinions. Do you know what? I, I remember 12 disciples <laughs> who would not have fit into to the cliques of today or the ideology of mankind, my friend, but Jesus chose them. Fishermen. Whom Jesus says, if you'll follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. I remember one of those fishermen whom the word of God tells us that, that he had reached a place in God. Brother Philip, that the word of God says that people, they would lay the sick in the streets and when Peter's shadow passed over them, they'd be healed. I'm going to tell you something tonight, my friend. It doesn't matter how the world defines you. It doesn't matter how the world sees you. It doesn't matter what the world thinks about you. My friend, all that matters is what God decides tonight. And if God decides to use you, God decides to open a door for you, there's nothing that man could do. The word of God says, is, that God opens a door that man no man can shut and God, when God closes a door no man can open it tonight I'm going to tell you something my destination my ministry my work my calling all of that is not up to anyone else you say well preacher you might go to your church this coming Sunday and all those people decide they want to vote you out as pastor that that's very possible you know tonight they may decide to vote me out as their pastor but I'm going to tell you something their vote still does not determine whether if I'm a preacher or not They're 
their vote still does not determine whether if I'm a pastor or not. Their vote does not determine whether if I go to heaven or not. Because I'm going to tell you something. If that door gets closed, God will open another door. But I, I hope and pray that doesn't happen. I don't want to go anywhere tonight, my friend. But I want you to understand, it's not up to anyone else tonight. And boy, did it take me a long time to learn that. It took me a long time to learn that who God created me to be was not determined by anyone else but Him. The Word of God says tonight that we are disturbed the gift that's within us. Joe, preacher, I don't have any kind of gift. Oh, honey, I got news for you. You do. You do. Maybe your gift is praying for other people. Maybe, maybe you're a prayer warrior. But I'm going to tell you something tonight. You have a gift tonight. And if you've not learned what that gift is, if you've not reached down and stirred that gift up tonight, my friend, it's time that you do so. It's time that you stop letting man make you doubt. It's time that you stop letting the world make you doubt. But my friend, it's time that you start listening to the voice of God and you be who God created you to be. We need to stand up tonight, my friend, and be the soldiers of God. We need to be the people of God. We need to be the heirs and the joint heirs with Christ Jesus. We need to be the the ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven. We need to be all that God has created us to be. I'm going to tell you something. Not just because we want to honor and glorify God, but I'm going to tell you something now. We need to stand up and be the people of God that God created us to be in this day and this hour so that the lost and dying people of this world can recognize that there is still a God that is able, that there is still a God that can make a difference. There is still a God that's in the saving business. There's still a God that is using people. There's still a God that is preaching the word and bringing forth the truth. My friend, tonight we need need to be the people that rise up with full confidence. We need to be completely confident in our faith and our walk with God tonight, my friend, so that the world may know that there is still a God of heaven that is doing a work in the midst of sin today. Wow. Say, preacher, you're really challenging us tonight. You're really asking us to step up and do something. I am. I am. I'm just asking you to step up and be who God created you to be. Don't be who your grandma wants you to be. Don't be who grandpa wants you to be. Don't be who the world wants you to be. Don't be who your neighbor wants you to be. Don't be who anybody else wants you to be. But my friend, be exactly who God wants you to be. Hmm? Because I'm going to tell you something. When you start growing and maturing, and becoming who God created you to be, you're going to find the presence of God, the power of God, the love of God, the truth of God, the blessings of God, and so much more tonight. Huh? But it begins with your relationship with Him. Let us pray. Father God, tonight as we come to you, we are truly grateful and thankful, Father God, for your grace, your love, and your peace. Father God, I had no idea where this message was going tonight, but I thank you, Lord, for the message from beginning to end. I believe, Father God, that you've spoken not only to my heart, but the hearts of many tonight. And I just pray, Father God, tonight, every one of those individuals that are listening in, Father God, that you connected with tonight, I pray, Father God, that some a seed was planted, a seed was water, a seed is growing, Father God, tonight. I I pray that for some that you have given them increase. I pray for some that maybe you've given them conviction. I just pray, Father God, whatever the work is that you are needing to do in each and every life, I pray, Father God, that right now that that work begins to happen and take place, that we begin to see people growing and maturing and finding strength in you. I just pray tonight that, Father God, that you move upon those that are in need. Father God, I have grandchildren and children. I have family. I have friends. I have uh, church members. I have a church. I have 
have good friends on Facebook, good friends in my community. Uh, Father God, good friends all around, Father God. I have co-workers, so many people, Father God, that needs a great and mighty move, Father God, tonight. But I believe that that begins with the church, Father God. I believe that if we will just rise up and begin to live and walk in what you have created us to be, if we will begin to walk and live the life that you created us to live, Father God, I believe that we can see multitudes being saved, that we can see multitudes being changed, that we can see healings and strengths and guidance and encouragements and deliverance. Father God, but I know that it begins with our relationship with you and our confidence in that relationship that you have with us and all that you desire for us tonight. Father God, if there's any that doubt, if there's any that lack confidence, I pray that right now that you will speak into their life and encourage them that they might receive all that they need from you to rise up and be who you've created them to be. Father God, speak your word tonight. Speak your will and your power into our lives that we might receive it and that it may come alive in us. Father God, let your will be done, your power be known, and your presence be felt. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, and amen. I hope and pray tonight that you enjoyed that just as much as I did. My friend, tonight I just hope and pray that that you will share tonight's message, that you will share, click the share button, so and, and invite your friends and your neighbors and everyone else to listen. Invite them to share it as well. Not not to give Pastor Perry honor and glory. I'm going to tell you something. I do not want any credit tonight, my friend. Give all credit to God. But I want us to, to share, and I want us to get the messages out there so that more and more people can enjoy what God is trying to say to them tonight. Don't forget, tomorrow night we won't be on at 9 o'clock, but we'll be on at 7 o'clock for our Bible study from Gordon Road Church of God here in Spotsylvania, Virginia. If you're local and you can come be with us, man, we have an open discussion Bible study on Wednesday nights. We have a really good time. We've seen more and more people coming out, and I thank God for that. So come be with us. If you can't come be with us in person, we will be online tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. I'll make sure to run it on my Facebook page, so make sure that you tune in tomorrow night as well. But I will be back on Thursday night and Friday. Friday night at 9 o'clock for Winding Down with Pastor Perry again. Come back and be with me, my friend. I pray that wherever you go tonight, that God goes with you. Whatever you do tonight, I pray that God will bless you and keep you safe. But my friends, I'm praying that God will use each and every one of you to reach someone else for the gospel truth. Be blessed and have a wonderful night.